My wife and I built our home on the cliffs here in a beautiful part of the world, on the southern coast of Ireland, in a place called the Copper Coast. Just down the road from our home is Kilmurran Cove. It's an absolute gem at the heart of the Copper Coast. And it was here on April 22nd, back in 2011, 10 years ago now, that I was sitting on this cliff, on this rock, when this horse made this mark on the beach below me. And it really was an epiphany moment that marked a new direction in my career as an artist, using the beach as my canvas. I began by exploring the materials with our own two kids. Soon afterwards I started running environmental art workshops as part of an art school we had opened called The Art Hand. Collaborative art is central to the ethos of The Art Hand and we have facilitated many workshops for schools, youth organisations, private groups and families. There are so many healthy benefits to bringing people together on these kinds of creative endeavours. And they also help people to build an appreciation for the natural environment. It wasn't long before I began to create some of my first large-scale solo artworks with a garden rake. I have documented every single artwork since the fateful day I encountered that horse. In fact, in the 10 years since then, I have created 544 separate artworks around Ireland, the UK and even as far as Texas. But no matter where my art has taken me, I always return to Kilmurran Cove. I have created 167 artworks there. And in this film, I've included a photograph of every single one. It's my home turf, my think tank. It feels like my own personal sandpit. I work with other materials too, like the rocks that are gathered in such abundance on the upper shore. I forage for materials locally including wild bamboo and seaweed. On special occasions, I light a fire in an old washing machine drum. I like creating positive things that bring joy to people. I sometimes incorporate words into my artworks for more specific context. I love that my art connects with people in a meaningful way. I've taken all kinds of commissions down through the years for things that resonate with me. I've created all kinds of special messages in the sand, including birthday surprises, marriage proposals, and family memorials. I've done workshops and artworks for festivals and large events, but these days I prefer to work with smaller groups, families and individuals. It allows people to experience the mindful qualities of sand art in a more authentic way. I love to be immersed in nature at low tide, with only the sounds of the wind and waves around me. Sometimes I can even hear the tide turn. I often have the place to myself. I'm joined by the oyster catchers, surfers and sea swimmers in the winter, and the sunbathers and holiday makers in the summer. My friend Joe joins me for bigger challenges. My artworks continue to evolve as I gain more experience and develop new tools and techniques. Each piece holds a special memory for me, 
I remember the weather and the quirky encounters that day. Many of my drawings are unplanned and I simply respond to the available sand on the day. I'm very aware of the direction I'm facing and when necessary I measure things by counting my steps. What I'm drawing becomes mapped out in my mind like a bird's eye view. It's hard to describe but when I'm fully immersed in the creation it's like an out of body experience. My sense of hearing is heightened, the physical task at hand becomes automatic and very little else goes through my mind. It is the temporary nature of the art form that seems to resonate most with people. It reminds them of the temporary nature of life itself. For me, the acceptance that nothing lasts forever brings a strange sense of peace and calm. For me, it's refreshing to witness the tide reclaiming the sand. And after all, it gives me a blank canvas and a chance to start afresh.